In this video, I'm going to be talking about classification of acute halides. The first one would be the methyl. Okay, so this is the simplest one. And example is this, okay? So you have the simplest one with just one carbon. So this is called a chloromethane. Now, the second classification would be the primary acyl halide. So the, this is representing primary, okay? An example of this would be CH3, CH2Br. Now, how do you know that this is a primary key halide? It is by looking at the carbon that has the halogen. Now, if I draw this out, this is what I'm going to have, okay? So if you are in doubt, always draw out the structure. Now, if this is what I have, we can see that this bromide which is the halogen, is attached to this carbon. The carbon with the halogen will be attached to only one carbon. If it is attached to just one other carbon, then it's primary acute halide. The third one would be secondary acute halide. Okay, secondary acute halide. And this is how you can represent it in a short form. This represents secondary. So the carbon bearing the halogen has to be attached to two other carbons for it to be a secondary acute halide. So example of this would be this particular one. So when you have something like this, the way it is, be confusing if you are just starting to learn organic chemistry. So if you're in doubt, just draw them out. So you have this C here, we have this H, this one, and the third one. Then here you have another one attached to hydrogen, attached to bromine, and then to this carbon, this one, also with two hydrogens, right? Then to this carbon, you have one hydrogen here, another hydrogen here, and the last hydrogen here, okay? So now that you've written it out, then this carbon is what we are going to be looking at. Now this particular carbon is connected to this carbon and to this carbon, that is two carbons, okay? So that is how you know that it is secondary acute halide. The fourth one would be tertiary acute halides, okay? Now, the, this represents tertiary, okay? So just the way we've been seeing the rest, this means that the carbon bearing the halogen has to be attached to three other carbons to be considered tertiary acute halides. So example of this would be this one here. So I'm just going to draw out this particular structure. So you see, very, very obvious, right? So this is attached to this, and this is attached to this, and to this, three different carbons. So once you see this, this is tertiary. We are asked to classify these two compounds as either primary, secondary, or tertiary. And if we look at this compound here, you can see that there's a carbon there. Right? And this is the main carbon bearing the halogen. It's attached to a carbon here, one carbon here, and another carbon here. So that is two. And since it's two, this is obviously secondary acute halide. Okay? So here, you have this as the carbon of interest, 
is the one bearing the bromine, which is a halogen. Now, this is directly connected to just one carbon and nothing else, right? So since it's connected to just one carbon, this is the primary acute halide. The second question says to classify this. So we are asked to classify this acute halide. Now note that in this case, you have two different halogens attached to the same compound, right? So this type of acute halide is called vicinal dihalide. Now, why is it called so? So any acute halide, yeah, so this is the name. Any acute halide that have their halogen on adjacent carbon. So you see, this is, on adjacent carbon to each other, it is called vicinal dihalide. So you need to also note this because you most times classification is mostly on those major things, primary, secondary, tertiary, and you might not see this in the classification, but they exist, okay? So this is called vicinal dihalide. Now, what if we have this compound. Two chloro three four dimethyl has been two chloro three four dimethyl has been. Okay, so you can see here that we are not given the structure, right? When you are in doubt. Just draw it out. Now look at this as our parent carbon. We need to put it out. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So and the attached groups is on the second carbon. You have a chloro group. So let's put it there. Then on the third and fourth carbon, you have third. This is third. You have the methyl group and the methyl group here. Now we fill up all our hydrogens to complete the bonds for carbon, which is four. So, okay, so this is what we will have as the structure of that compound. Now we have this, we can easily classify it. Right, so it's important. Sometimes looking at just the name, you might make some mistakes. So it's always better to just quickly write out the structure so you can easily say what it is. Now, in this case, you have this as the carbon of interest. And this carbon is connected to one of this carbon and one of this carbon. So this is obviously the secondary acute halide. Okay, so that is how you classify this particular compound. Now let's also see this other example. So we have this one as 2,2-dichloro Five isopropyl cyclohexane. Okay, so when we have this, we we'll draw it out again. Now, in this case, we have cyclohexane. Cyclo is telling us that it is in a cyclic form, right? But it's hexane, six carbon. So this is one, two three, four, five, six. So if you can't decide, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a cyclohexane. Now, two, two dichloro, 
two, two. Now, I'll take this as my two and take this as one. So if this is two, then it means that I have one chlorine, another chlorine on the same carbon. On the fifth carbon, I have isopropyl. Now this is one, this is two, three, four, five. Now here is my five. On this fifth carbon, I have isopropyl. This is how isopropyl looks like. Okay. All right. Now I have the complete compound drawn out. The question now is, what is the classification of this particular acute halide? We have two halogen attached on the same carbon. Okay, that is you have one, one, two, two, three, three, di, chloro. It is called germinal dihalide. Okay, so this particular compound classification is Gemini dihalide. So when you have one, one, two, two, three, three, and so on, showing you that the halide is attached on the same carbon, this is the classification, okay? Gemini dihalide. When you have it as one, two, two, three, three, four, you get what I'm saying? You have them on adjacent carbons to each other then it is called piscina dihalide, okay? So that is how you classify things like this, okay? So this one says to classify 3-chloro-3-ethylheptene, okay? Now, let's write it out as usual, okay? So we have heptene, you can do it in a lines format. Um, starting from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So always confirm when you're drawing a line structure to be sure that all the carbons are captured. So have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Complete. Now on the third carbon, you have chlorine. Okay. So this is one, two, three. On the third carbon, you have a chlorine. And on the same top carbon, you have an ethyl group. So I would go this way. Okay. That looks strange, right? Um, we can redraw this and then make it look better. And make it look like this. Either way, that is not a problem. It's the same compound anyway. So now that we have it drawn out, what type of halide or what is the class of halide for this compound? Now, if you look at this carbon, it's attached to one carbon here, two carbon here, and three, right? Three, means tertiary acute halide. And you just have one chlorine, so you don't have to think about the complicated ones like the vicinal, the germinal, and the rest. So in this case, this is tertiary acute halide. 